In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can display dynamic content in any way that you want. So by default, Elementor Pro has the post widget where you can only customize a few things to display dynamic content like blog posts or any custom post type that you want. But what if you have your own design? That's how I work. I design my websites in Adobe XD before I go into Elementor. So let's say that I want to create something like this. That's impossible if you only have Elementor Pro. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So welcome back everybody. For the people that don't know me, my name is Reno. I'm from Living With Pixels and a month ago, I uploaded this video, a one and a half hour tutorial on how to create this blog. So in this video, we've created this whole blog together. Uh, and that took a while, of course, but there's one thing that I didn't explain in that video, and that is how to create those custom loops. And I honestly don't really understand why this feature isn't built inside of Elementor Pro, because displaying dynamic content is so important if you're working for clients, because otherwise you're so limited in terms of design. So let's just get started. So let's first go to the backend of WordPress. And as you can see, I already have a lot of blog posts on this website that we want to display. So let's click on one of the blog posts. And what we have is a title over here. We have a little bit of content, an image, a little bit of text. We have a featured image, which is the image that's gonna be displayed over here. And we also have categories. So if you scroll up, I've made a few categories and this blog post actually belongs to three categories. And uh, one of them is featured. And we're gonna use this category, which I just created over here, to display on top over here. Because you need to tell WordPress what kind of blog post you want to be there. And in this design, I wanna choose what kind of blog post display on top of the website, because this is designed as a featured blog. But you can also use this technique if you're just creating a list with the latest blog posts, which I've done on this website. So this is also a custom design, a custom loop, because one of those blocks, you call them loops, right? So this is also a custom design. Here I've just created a vertical grid with those loops uh, that just displays the latest blog post, but it's the same technique. Okay, so now you know what kind of data we have that we can display in a dynamic way. Okay, so how you do that is, uh, first of all, install the plugin. Uh, again, it's called Elementor Custom Skin. Uh, I think they should have called it Elementor Custom Loop because you create a loop, but they call it skin, skin, loop, whatever. It's the same thing. And if you have that installed, and of course Elementor Pro, by the way, if you've never worked with Elementor Pro, then I have a basics video in the card or in the description, but I guess that most people already know uh, Elementor Pro. So if you have Elementor Pro, you can go to templates over here and go to Team Builder. And if you have this plugin installed, you have this new tab over here called Loop. So let's click on the loop, let's add a new loop, and we're gonna call this Featured Loop. All right, let's click on Create the Template. So what we're gonna do now is create one of those loops or blocks or skins, how you wanna call them. So click this one away. Let's look at our final design. So what it is, is just one of these blocks. So that's gonna be a section. Then we have a shadow that starts at the bottom. We have a title and we display the categories. All right, let's first work with the background and that shadow. So let's create one of those sections. All right. Now, first of all, let's display a background. So go to style over here, click on classic, and now we're gonna work with a dynamic image. So click on the dynamic tags, and we're gonna use the featured image because we have set up a featured image on the back end over here because we want to display that featured image that is connected to the blog post. Now, it doesn't display anything because there's no content in this uh, section. So first you need to put something in to see the background. I don't know why, but that's how it works. To see what we're actually doing, let's also drag in the title. So drag in the post title from here. And as you can see now, the background starts appearing. There's only a little bit uh, visible over here. So let's click on the uh, uh, main section again and adjust the size a little bit. So let's add a little bit of padding on the top. So unlink this and add a little bit of padding on the top, maybe 150. That's gonna be enough for now. And maybe a little bit at the bottom, maybe 10. Okay, so now let's adjust the image a little bit. Go to the background again, go to style, center, center, size, cover. All right, that is a little bit better. 
And now we want to display the categories. So how you're going to do that is by going back and then drag in this widget called post info. So drag it on the bottom because on our final design, as you can see over here, the categories are at the bottom. So there's a lot of info here. I don't want the offer. I don't want the date. Date is also something that a lot of blog posts display. So you can also uh, display the date. All right. Let's click on add an item. And I want to go to terms. And then I want to display the categories. All right. Like this. That looks good. Uh, delete the comments. Uh, I don't want an icon. I'm going to style this a little bit. Okay, I want the text to be in capitals. Now let's change the title a little bit because we want a white title and we're not going to see that right now uh, because we need to add that shadow. Okay, so I'm going to put that at an H3 because it's going to be a smaller title. I think this is okay. Let's uh, test it after we apply the shadow. So click on your background. And how you apply that shadow is uh, by going to background overlay because it's an overlay on the background before the content, right? And then click on gradient. And then if you add a gradient, make sure you have two colors that you can really see what you're doing. Okay, now we want to change the red to black. So let's just do that. Okay. And this one, we also want to put that at black. But then you want to make that transparent. So then, then grab this slider over here. And then you can see that there's now a shadow from the bottom. You can even change the location if you want to. Like this and make it uh, more heavy. And make it more towards the bottom. Something like this. Maybe increase the opacity to make the text more visible. And now maybe change a little bit of the spacing to make it fit nicely. And there's one more thing that I forgot to mention, and that is that you can make the title clickable while you actually need to, because otherwise people won't have an option to go to the actual blog post. So what you need to do is you need to click on the title, then go to content, then go to link, and then make sure that you click on dynamic tags and just put it on this one, post URL. And that's automatically going to link it to the blog post that this uh is connected to then you can also unlink uh, the categories because otherwise it will go to the category pages which you may not have created yet so if you go to content then open it again make sure that you uncheck this and then the uh, categories will not be linked only the title will be linked okay now uh, let's test this little design uh, so what you need to do is then click on publish and here you don't need to display any conditions because we're going to do that with the Elementor Pro uh, post widget. So just click on save and close and then go to your homepage uh, where you want to display the post widget. Click on refresh because we have new data now in the background. And now you want to drag in your post widget. So drag in the post widget, this widget over here, drag it in. And now you can select the new custom skin that we have. So you have this new option over here with this plugin that is called custom. And now we can select our featured loop, which we've just created. And as you can see, now it starts to display our own design. Okay, so what do we want here? Three columns, that's okay. We want maximum of three. That is a little bit better. And now for the query, you want to display the blog posts that have the category featured. So the three latest blog posts where you've checked featured needs to be displayed over here. So how you do that is go to post, make sure this is on post and include them by term in the same way as we did with the categories. And the term that we want is featured. So if you start typing featured, it will recognize category featured. Click on that and now it will only display blog posts that have the category featured. And in this way, you can decide from the backend what blog post needs to be on top over here. Then you can order them by date over here and you can leave it at descending, which is the latest one first or ascending, which is the oldest one first. So I'm gonna put it at descending. And now all you have to do is just make the uh, 
design adjustments to make it fit your design and you don't do that over here you do that within the loop right so if you click this away you can see the final design over here and there's one problem that i see already and that is when there are two titles the block becomes longer and that is of course not what you want you want to make these blocks fit nicely together um, so we need to make a few adjustments so I'm going to go back to my loop editor. What you then need to do is just put all of these paddings on 25 and then give it a minimum height. So if you go over here, go to minimum height and just give it a minimum height of, um, let's say 230. And then we need to put that column at the bottom. So how you can do that is by go to your main section. Oh, actually we're already here. Then go to column position and put that at the bottom. And now, as you can see, this is a little bit better. So let's just try that again. Go back to our home page and click on the refresh. And now you can see that all the blocks are the same height. So that is actually what you uh, need to do if you want to make the blocks uh, the same height. Now you can see that I want to make a few design changes. For example, the line height over here. I'm not going to show you how to do that because that's part of the basics. Uh, you already know, but there's one more thing that I want to show and that is responsiveness. Uh, so if you go back to your homepage, make sure you're on the latest version inside of the Elementor editor. You can check the view for tablet and mobile. So uh, I'm going to click on responsive right now. And now it displays uh, three blog post but it's displayed like this which is not what i want so if you scroll down over here you can put this at three and then it becomes a little bit smaller maybe it's not the prettiest so maybe you also want to adjust the tablet modus over here to make it fit your design a little bit better but this is actually all i did and then for mobile make sure that the columns are on one and posts per page are on three so in that way you will get a design like this you can even change the uh, the height between the columns over here if you go to style rose gap you can change that over here make it a little bit smaller make it fit your design also the line height over here as you can see but those are little details that you can set up yourself so i'm going to click on update and i'm going to recap uh so what we did is we created one of those loops which we then display with the post widget of elementor so you can also use this technique to any dynamic content that you want the only difference is that instead of you choosing the featured loop here which are just blog posts you go in the query over here and and here you can search for different kind of dynamic content so maybe you have a portfolio section on your website right like i have on my uh, personal website i've also used this technique so i will show you uh, uh what i mean so if you go to my portfolio you can see these blocks and this is not custom uh, with Elementor Pro. This is also built with Elementor custom skin. So as you can see this button over here, this little arrow and the hover effect on the image, the shadow. That's the same technique. And these are not blog posts, but these are custom blog posts. So if you want to know how that works for a portfolio website like this, I also have a video, actually videos about this uh, because I've built a whole uh, playlist with videos on how I build my own personal website. So I will put the link for that playlist in the description for sure. And maybe I can also put a playlist link in the card. So that's it uh, for this video. I hope that you found this valuable. I use this technique on almost all of the client websites um, because I want to be able to uh, use my own designs that I designed in Adobe XD. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, then please let them down below. Again, I cannot answer everybody, but I try my best. And then I wanna thank you and I hope to see you in the next video.